Okay, guys, let's start. Welcome, everybody, to this uh, initial training school for the, the Scavens project. Uh, this is the program that we have, so it will be uh, five days long. We will have different talks from different speakers across the duration of, uh, of the, the week. Uh, we will start today with, with an introduction to the um, scavenge project by myself and then we will have a break and then we have uh, uh, two sessions by Leonardo Badia, professor at the University of Padua, explaining a bit how to give a presentation and how to present scientific results and all this kind of soft skill as they used to call. And, and then there will be a uh, uh, a slot dedicated to yourself, so the introduction to yourself, uh, uh, who you are, your background, and your project you're uh, in, uh, in the scavenge. Okay? And, and then there are other talks during the, the other days that are uh, more technical. We will have the, the participation of uh, uh, Professor Ezio Biglieri, that is explained to us some basics on wireless communications. So all this uh, kind of uh, uh, stuff about the channel modeling um, and, and coding and modulation schemes, so the basics, fundamentals of the, of the wireless communication. Then we will have also uh, another uh, class about macro decision processes and uh, dynamic programming by Professor Miguele Rossi of the University of Padua. It will be on Thursday and, and, uh, and Friday. And another on convex optimization by Volkan Severer from, uh, from APFL of Lausanne. And then we also invited two, two guys that are more for, from the industry that give to us some information and some vision about how the industry see uh, the 5G. You know that the project, as you will see during my presentation today, is about the definition of 5G, broadly speaking. So these two guys, Dino Flore and uh, David Lopez Perez, will give to us uh, the industrial vision of the 5G uh, systems, let's say. So in particular, Dino will, will present some uh, standardization activity. So he will present what is 3GPP, which is the organization that is standardizing uh, 5G systems and in the past 4G, 3G and 2G. So GSM, UMTS and what now is called LTE 4G is, is standardized by this organi organization. It is the chairman of the Radio Access Network uh, support group. And then there will be mm, this guy here, David, that will present to us uh, the industrial vision of uh, what will be 5G, the challenges, and, uh, and the open issue that we will have when define and design this system is from uh, Nokia Bell Lab, so there is this industrial uh, way of thinking in, in, in this talk. So as you may notice, the, the school is uh, a bit uh, industrial oriented and another part is more theoretical for, for our study. So the idea of the project is to have both, always, these both visions, the more theoretical one academic, let's say, and the other one is more um, industrial, in order to have at the end of your projects, I mean, both visions, okay? Okay, so I, I think we can start with the, with the introduction to the, um, to the scavenge project. Uh, it's supposed to, to last more or less one hour and something, so if you have some question, please interrupt me whenever you want. I would like to be interactive, so it's less boring for me and for you also. Since it's, it's uh, early morning, maybe we are a bit sleeping, so let's try to, to give some, uh, some uh, uh, good mood. Okay, so first of all, I'm Paolo Dini, so I'm, I will be the coordinator of the project. So whenever issue you can have, you can refer to me and to other person that I will introduce to you in the, in the framework of this presentation. And uh, basically I, I made this, uh, this presentation by two parts. So I would like to introduce, uh, first of all, 
uh, some motivation behind uh, our project uh, and give mainly the scope of our project. So the, the definition of this paradigm or concept, which is sustainable 5G networks. And then I would like to explain a bit more uh, how we are going to implement uh, our project and how to position your projects, your individual project in the more, uh, uh, let's say, in the whole project as, as, a, as the entire project. So we will speak about the research part, the training part, and we will uh, look at the work packages of the project. And I will also explain to you how we are going to supervise your work. So if you have any question in that part, mainly, I mean, again, interrupt me. OK. I would like to start with, with this concept, because as you may know, I mean, the, the acronym is CAVENGE, the first S, is uh, sustainable. So it means sustainable cellular network harvesting ambient energy. So I would like to, uh, to introduce you the concept of sustainability in the framework of engineering and in ICT. So this is the definition given by the, the UNESCO, which is the, the, agen the agency of the United Nations on Education, Science and Culture. And it says that this, this, this phrase here, the process of using resources in a way that does not compromise the environment or deplete the materials for future generations. Okay. And they also say that uh, sustainable engineering is an interdisciplinary approach. So it's not only a matter of environmental engineers. We, as for example, ICT engineers are working in ICT, we should also take into account sustainability issues when we design a system. So this is the idea of, of, of UNESCO when defining sustainable engineering. And they also claim, moreover, that it's important to include this concept in, in our businesses in general. This is the reason why normally there is uh, a corporate responsibility department within, for example, the, the main and the biggest uh, vendors or operators in our industry as well. Okay. So, okay. What is sustainability in ICT? Uh, what means be sustainable in, in our industry? ICT, you may know that is information and communication technology, right? So, what we have to do is to study and practice this the, and design uh, and manufacture using and disposing computers, servers, all the elements of our systems in an in efficient and effective way in order to have minimal or no impact to the environment. So this is uh, the, main, uh, the main thing of, uh, of sustainability in ICT. This is a definition given in 2008. So as you may notice, the, this paradigm, this concept is quite new in ICT. So what we have to do is when, for example, we are studying these uh, different areas in our project, we have to take into account that we should have minimal impact on the environment when we design, for example, future 5G systems. On the other hand, there is another, another concept that is um, using ICT for sustainability. So as you may notice, uh, ICT is a part of the world, but it's not the entire world. So there are other industry, there are other uh, behaviors uh, as individuals. And uh, ICT can also help in uh, creating, enabling, encouraging uh, other parts, sustainable patterns uh, of other environment industries uh, to have uh, sustainability. So for example, when we have uh, you may uh, have uh, information about the digitalization of everything. So, for example, I'm sure that you are listening to music. And wh when you listen to music before, you will uh, use different support like vinyl or uh, tapes or CDs and all this kind of stuff. Now it's more, let's say, intangible. So you have this digital stuff. So you are using less material to, to have a product. And also ICT can help in uh, 
to travels. So now we are, we, we are meeting, but in the framework of the project, we will have a lot of conference call, virtual meeting. So it's another way that we can use less physical resources to have, uh, uh, let's say, a meeting in, in, in that case. Okay. So generally speaking, this is called dematerialization. So virtualized stuff is something that is somehow giving more sustainability. And also, uh, this, uh, this part is, uh, is also, let's say, used in what is uh, in different um, industry, for example, to increase the efficiency of the industry itself. For example, in, in the smart grids, uh, you know there is the, the electrical grid. You have normally uh, a well-defined structure of the electrical grid to distribute, to generate, distribute, and consume the energy. And now with the use of ICT, you can put more intelligence in the grid in order to uh, increase the, uh, the efficiency, for example, in the distribution of the energy, in the generation of the energy, how to consume the energy upon a request and done always. So all this kind of stuff uh, can decrease, actually, the use of, uh, of physical resources and, and increase the efficiency of, uh, the, efficiency of, the, of the, the electrici electricity grid. Another example is the smart building. Again, with the use of ICT, we can understand if we need, for example, in a room, a, a given temperature and uh, enabling a needing system or not, because of the presence or not of people inside. So this other uh, example give uh, less, uh, increase the efficiency, and give uh, less um, uh, depletion of resources, like, for example, the energy for heating uh, a given room. And the more general concept is the, the smart city, when all these things uh, are applied to a, a big city, for example, to manage intelligently uh, traffic, uh, bus transportation, public transportation in general, and uh, also pollution in, in the city, and all this kind of stuff. So the idea is to use whatever we want of uh, ICT, sensors, uh, communication infrastructure, to increase the efficiency in terms of energy, and then decrease the footprint of the humans in the, in the environment. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have said that ICT can help a lot in sustainability, that we have to design ICT as a sustainable uh, industry. So let's see some figure about ICT. So we use a lot, and what, it, what is happening now is that information and communication technology are used by more or less everybody in the world. This is the number of uh, subscribe, mobile subscribers that we have. Let's take into account that the world uh, uh, population is around 7 billion. So it means that, in average, more or less everybody is a subscriber of a mobile uh, company. And also in the fixed part, we have more or less the 40, 41, uh, percent of, uh, of houses that are connected to the to, to internet. So this means that we are using a lot of technology for communication and for other scopes. And this is changing somehow our lifestyle. Also, for example, the way we are uh, communicating, we are sending much more messages than in the past. Uh, we have the possibility to communicate with our people remotely and watching the video, for example, and uh, making video calls. So it's changing a lot, uh, our way of style, lifestyle. And also this is uh, increasing the benefits for, uh, for society and, and for businesses. For example, you, you, um, if you are working in a company, you use a lot the email to communicate with other companies. So this is uh, shrinking the, the, um, the time or for the interaction among different organizations, different businesses. There are a lot of uh, industries that are using internet for uh, uh, financial and other kind of economical um, 
business. So this is giving a lot of uh, benefit uh, also for, uh, for business. So, I mean, it, ICT has a big impact in our uh, society nowadays. And in particular, we think that mobile network had uh, give this big impact more than the fixed one because, uh, I mean, you can use your, your phone, I mean, wh when you are moving, uh, always, uh, more or less always, when you are outside, so there is a kind of global coverage, so you can use this kind of technology more or less everywhere. But uh, this means that there is a huge amount of traffic that are passing through this network. So these are estimations by, by Cisco, which is a, a vendor of uh, telecommunication infrastructure in general, equipment. And uh, they say that uh, in the future there will be uh, this capacity increase, so 1,000 more capacity for next generation system, uh, what is called 5G. And this is mainly due to different, different, uh, different reasons. The first is that the number of devi devices is increasing a lot. So you have for sure one or more phones. Some of these phones are, are smartphones, so you are using a lot of application from the internet to use your, uh, your phone. Uh, there are a lot of sensors deployed in the, in the city and, and in the environment in general. So this is what is called Internet of Things. So there will be things that are connected to the Internet. One is, could be a sensor. Other things that could be connected, for example, could be some equipment of your house, like fridges or, or other stuff that you have owned in, in, your, uh, in, your, uh, uh, in your house. We will see what this paradigm means in the, in the framework of this school and in the other school. So there will be also some other uh, devices that will be more wearable. So for example, you know that there are these, these things that you can put in, on, on your shirt, on your uh, body, in order to measure your uh, heartbreak or whatever. So there is an, a huge number of devices that has been used in, in this kind of uh, um, environment with this use. So the number, of the, the number of devices is increasing a lot. This is the idea and the forecast for the, for the future. So we, in, in five years, uh, we have more or less more than 10 billion of devices that will be connected to the, to the mobile system, in this case, for example, 5G. And all these devices, we will use a lot what is called cloud application. So all the applications that are in the internet, for example, uh, all the social networking uh, um, stuff, uh, application in general, all uh, the uh, video services, for example. Uh, YouTube is one of the most used uh, provider of videos. So it seems that video will be one of the most dominant application in the future. But video is also a uh, bit consuming, a capacity consuming, because it sends a lot of information, images, uh, moving images, and uh, uh, also uh, audio. So putting together these two uh, streams, it means that there is a lot of capacity that is requested to the system. So, this other graph here is showing how is increasing the, the traffic in the, in the network. This is the forecast again for this five year from 2015 to 2020. And according to this estimation by Cisco, it seems that we are going to arrive around 30 exabytes per month. So it means that it's a huge amount of uh, of traffic that will be uh, provided to users by the network and the network to the users. Uh, this means also that we have a kind of exponential growth of, of the traffic in the years. It's about 53% of uh, annual growth, so it's huge. 
And uh, this is the reason why we have to take it into account if we want to have a sustainable uh, system, the energy uh, demand of this network. So it is uh, estimated by these guys in 2013 that uh, the ICT in general, the ecosystem of information and communication technology, is consuming around 150, 1,500 uh, terawatt hour per year of electricity. Okay? This means that it's around 10% of the world electricity generation. And to have a comparison, it means that we will have, this is uh, around 50% more than avionic industry and is around 2 and 4% of the car carbon footprint of the human activity. Th the difference between 2 and 4 is if, is if uh, we consider also entertainment and media, so for example the, the game uh, station that we can use, uh, TV and all this kind of stuff. So if we are considering also these uh, devices inside the ICT, then we are doubling the footprint of the of the of the system. If not, I mean, we are more or less at, at the at the, at the half level of uh, of a footprint. Uh, another important fact is that, as since traffic is also increasing a lot uh, every year, this means that we have also an increase uh, of 10 percent of the footprint every year of our system, ICT system. And the forecast uh, for uh, uh, 2030 are this one. So if we are continuing like this, we are going to increase our uh, the ICT electricity consumption by 50, is, will be the 51% the uh, of the global electricity generation. And in terms of carbon footprint, will be the 23%. So we have to do something in order to decrease this, uh, this footprint in, uh, in our system. Another interesting part that is uh, uh, shown in this graph is the uh, division in th three parts uh, of, the, of our system. So we have, first of all, uh, the network, the blue part in, in, the three, uh, in the three graph that are for three different years. So this is the, the infrastructure itself. So in our case of mobile, will be all the base station antennas and all the servers and routers that are transporting the, the information to the end, end host. Then there is the red part, which, is, which accounts the, the electricity generation and the footprint of the devices, actually. In this case, look that are reported only, uh, let's say, desktop, so PCs in general, laptop, mobile devices, and in this case there are also uh, uh, mobiles, so smartphone and all this kind of stuff. Uh, sensors and machines are not taken into account in, in this graph. Maybe, probably because in 2012, when they did the study, was not so used, um, usual to have this kind of uh, connected devices also. And another part that which is important is the, the data centers. So all the data, sens data centers that are in the, in the internet, in the cloud, are also consuming a lot uh, of electricity. And as you may notice, more or less, this is uh, the, the amount of electricity and the footprint for, for, three, for these three parts are more or less the same. So it means that we have to consider these three uh, parts when we design uh, a sustainable 5G system. Okay, so this is again uh, the ecological perspective, so the footprint in, on the environment. And uh, this is the estimation by this guy here uh, that in, in 2020 we will have more or less uh, 11 megatons of uh, carbon uh, emission and, and also in this part we are uh, also uh, dividing the, the footprint in three parts. The first will be the run operation, the mobile devices, and the data centers. 
So again, there are these three parts that will be important to take into account when we design sustainable uh, system. And interesting to note is that RAN and so radio access network and mobile devices will dominate the footprint in the, in the future. But the, the data centers will have, according to this estimation, the most, uh, the, the largest uh, growth during, during the year. So it means that now data centers maybe are not so much exploited, but in the future there will be more. This is a general trend in, uh, in mobile network because data centers now are used mainly for providing services, but probably in 5G system, uh, they will be provide also uh, the management of our networks. Uh, there are some paradigms that are under study in the, in the standardization and in the definition of 5G system like software defined networking and network virtualization that are actually trying to understand how to virtualize services, transport services, and in general software. So this kind of trend is uh, entering a lot in the definition of the new networks like our 5G network. So this is the reason why probably data center will increase their uh, importance in the, in the management of the network. Okay, then there is this other part because we have uh, spoken till now about the environmental sust sustainability. But it's also important to understand that economy is one of the important part in our industry because there are operators that they want revenues when they put a service in the network. So, and also when you have, for example, a project, an activity, when you want that this activity uh, last during the year, it means that it has to be some uh, money behind to, to survive, okay? So, uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this framework, uh, there is this study that has been published in 2007, when they discovered that mainly in th the study was about uh, Western Europe companies, they discovered that the energy bill of a mobile operator is equal to the personal cost. So it means that the energy that is needed to run the network operation, only to run the network operation, not to manufacture all the devices and then to uh, handle the, uh, the end of life cycle of the environment itself, which is also account for a big part of the, the energy waste of, uh, of our industry. But just to uh, run the, the network, so to operate the network, is equal to uh, the cost that a mobile operator has to pay to run and maintain the network. This is in 2007. But the trend now is that the energy bill, uh, I mean the energy cost in general, is, is increasing a lot due to the energy market in the last decades. And for the same reason of the market, also the personal cost is decreasing a lot. So this means that this is not sustainable because this, uh, this cost is probably higher and bigger of, uh, than the, the personal cost. So what does it mean in terms of uh, money for the operators that they are decreasing the, the revenue? So this is also something that is not uh, uh, sustainable for them because they cannot maintain their network if they not, don't have uh, money to, to or revenue for, for that. Um, for example, this is um, a report by uh, Vodafone Germany and in this period Every year, we say that uh, they are shrinking the revenue by 6%. So one, one idea uh, to be sustainable in general, in terms of uh, um, economy and uh, of ecological perspective, is that, that if we decrease the energy bill, so if you are using some techniques to be more energy efficient, uh, energy efficient probably we can also help the revenue of uh, the mobile operator and to increase the revenue and uh, the market in general. So all, all, all that I, I, I described during this um, preliminary part is inserted in a more general political environment 
in, in Europe, for example, there is this document that is called Roadmap 2050. That is a strategy, strategy by the, the European Union that wants to reduce uh, the greenhouse gases emission by 80, 95 percent by 2050. So this is the idea. So the, the, the idea is actually to decarbonize the system, so to, to use less and less uh, fossil fuels and to increase a lot uh, uh, the exploitation and the use of renewable energy. So in this, in this sense, I mean, our project is completely aligned with this, uh, with this um, vision because the idea is to use uh, more and more renewable energy also in ICT since it is an industry that is increasing a lot its importance in the society and increasing a lot the carbon footprint uh, in, uh, of, the human, of the human activities. Okay, so what is the story about this, uh, our mobile system? Um, hello. Uh, in this graph, I reported uh, the data traffic or capacity and the energy consumption of the system and over the time. So when we started to make some digital mobile system, uh, like in 2G, the GSM, mainly the, the mail, uh, the, when we designed this network, the, the main concern was about the coverage. So we want to cover more or less uh, every place to give uh, 2G services that actually was mainly voice service. Then when uh, people start to design 3G systems, the idea was to give more capacity to user to increase the number of service that they can uh, uh, exploit. For example, video started to be a service in, in 3G, data traffic also start to be uh, quite important in this kind of system. So the idea is to increase again the capacity and uh, not only the coverage. So we have reached uh, more or less global coverage, and then we want them to increase the capacity of the system to give more service. And this is again the trend for the 4G system that now we are using uh, or start using in, in the last years. So we have more and more capacity, but this means again that if we have more capacity, we have also more energy consumption so this is the trend of the, the traffic volume that is uh, exchanged between entities in the network. And this is also the trend of the, the energy consumption during uh, the definition of these systems. The idea now with the definition of 5G system, due to all the, the motivation that I uh, introduced to you in, in the slides before, is to have a more energy-oriented system. So the idea is that, OK, we want to have more capacity, so more traffic, but we want to try to, try to uh, not to have this exponential growth of energy, kind of uh, more or less flat, maybe not. It will not be flat, because it's impossible if the demand is increasing to have no energy increase. But we could have some uh, methods to decrease the, uh, the energy consumption, to use, for example, renewable energy to increase the, uh, the energy efficiency of the system. So this is the reason why during the last decades, more or less, uh, there, will be, there, there has been this, uh, this topic in the research community that is entering also in the, in the industry about the energy saving. Actually, what has been done so far is to study how we can decrease the energy consumption of the network and to increase the energy efficiency of the mobile network, uh, let's say minimizing what the energy is, is draining from the, the electrical grid. And another thing that has been st studying is uh, uh, the use of energy harvesting for, uh, for our system, mobile system. This is uh, mainly uh, started with the sensor networks because sensors have uh, energy constraints because they are very little machine. And normally, they are not connected to the grid. They, are, they have battery. So the, the life cycle of these devices is, uh, is important, has been important uh, because you don't want to uh, change battery every, for example, every day or every month. So 
they start to use this different harvester to have, uh, let's say, more or less continuous um, energy in the, in the devices. And this, this uh, has been then applied to more general mobile system to have continuous uh, and renewable um, energy to supply different devices of the, of the mobile system. So these are the, the, the trend. So, and the, the concept that we have to study in our project is about this. So the application of the sustainable design, so the use of harvesters and in general uh, renewables energy in our system. So the idea is to use green energy sources or other kind of sources like for example RF sources uh, to supply all the elements of our network such as base station, routers, servers in data centers, uh, sensors, mobile devices. So this is changing a lot the, the, the design of network because now we have to take into account that we have a limited amount of energy that is um, given to, uh, to the devices because we have this uh, intermittent and erratic uh, energy source which is not so constant as the, the grid, the energy grid. So we have to take this into account in order not to uh, degrade the, the quality of service of our user in order to have always or more or less always the, the to be able to satisfy the traffic demands of the of the users so we have to take this into account that this is changing a lot uh, how we design the the network uh, of the of the future okay so this is the vision of of our project scavenge so again the idea is to have this kind of network, so sustainable 5G mobile networks, when, where we will use uh, harvesters in general. So we have to understand which are the most suitable sources for our uh, system, and we want to use these sources in order to decrease the dependency from the energy grid to be more self-sustainable and to decrease the carbon footprint of, of, our, of our system. How we, we will do this? Uh, this, is, this project is uh, mainly a, a project divided in, in two parts, let's say. We will have a research part plus a training part. So all that I explained to you now is about the motivation of our research. So uh, each of you has a specific individual project for uh, studying a selected area of this big ecosystem that I try to describe during this session. And then there will be also some training part where you will be trained with classes like this this week about different topics that could be useful for you in the implementation of your individual project. Okay, so the idea is that at the end of this uh, four years, um, three years, we will have, uh, I mean, trained students that can be uh, entered in the, in the market, so in the industry or in the academia, with a uh, very good skill in sustainable design for 5G networks, okay? And the idea of the project is to have a holistic approach, so we want to study different things of sustainability in 5G uh, networks. First of all, we have to, is a cross-disciplinary stuff because we want, first of all, to understand which are the energy sources that are suitable for uh, our system. Our system is composed by different devices with different energy consumption figures. So we have to understand also which are the energy consumption of different devices that we have in our system then we have to understand if we want to also store part of the energy for future use in our system or not. And, and then we pass, this is more energy oriented part. So generation, storing uh, uh, of the energy. And then there will be a more, uh, let's say ICT oriented part 
when we have to design the system, taking into account the sources that we have selected in the, in the previous part. So again, we have a limited budget of energy that we have to maximize the use of this energy budget to have the possibility to, um, to give the, to satisfy the traffic demand and the quality that the user requests to us as an engineer of the, of, the, of the network. And also, making this, we want to understand how we can integrate this energy harvesting 5G system with the smart grid in general. Because as you may know, also in the electricity market and the electricity industry, there is an, inter an interest in uh, increasing the number of renewable energies used in, the, in their system. So the idea is that maybe we can also support this integration of renewables into the, the electricity grid. So this is the general scope of, of, our, of our project. Okay, I'm speaking a lot. Are you tired? Any question so far? So far, so good. No? Okay, who we are? Uh, we are these nine entities here. Uh, CTDC is coordinating the, the network. Then we have University of Padua, uh, Imperial College London, SEA List, uh, University of Stratglide, uh, Atonet and World Sensing, and, and Huawei at Toshiba. So we have uh, nine beneficiaries, as the, uni uh, the U uh, European Union call us. And we are in, uh, in Finland, uh, UK, uh, France, Spain, and, and Italy. These are the countries that we are going to visit because we have a lot of meetings and, and school during the, during the project. Then there, there, there are also some uh, supporting uh, organization. Uh, European Union called this organization uh, partner organization. Uh, Within the consortium, there are also these universities here that actually help some partners to provide a PhD degree to, to our students. Like, for example, ha us as a, mm, a research center, we cannot have a PhD degree. So we, uh, we uh, are with University UPC, Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya, that provide uh, to our students the, the PhD degree to, uh, to our students. And the same is applying for, for SEA. And uh, Tampere is doing the same for, for uh, Huawei. And Toshiba is relying on Imperial College. So these are the, and the two SMEs, Atonet and World Sensing, are uh, relying on uh, University of Padua, because it's, this, um, this industry is located quite close to, to Padua. And this other is located in, in Barcelona, so is again relying on, on, on uh, Universidad Politecnica de Catalonia here in Barcelona. So, um, by the way, all, all the information that I'm providing to you are also part of the grant agreement that we sign as a contract with the European Union that you have to read as student of the network. So if you don't, please uh, go to your supervisors and say, please send me the grant agreement because this is mandatory that you understand what, which is the contract that we signed with the European Union. There are several articles and then there is a technical part that now I'm trying to, to introduce a bit, but more detail are in the, in the contract. So now I give an introduction and an overview, but if you have uh, more questions, please read the, the grant agreement. And then if you have questions, come to me, drop an email, or to your supervisor, and then for having more information about this. So what, what, what the, the union is expected to us? First of all, uh, to fill this, this gap that there is in sustainable design for ICT, because uh, so far there is no master and PhD courses on, on, this, uh, on these topics, not so well structured as we intend to, to do during the framework of the project. So we have to, to make these courses and this research in order to fill this gap. And we want to have uh, 
this research and training on, on uh, this cross-disciplinary um, uh, understanding of technology. So we want to study energy plus ICT and try to make some contribution to the research community to design sustainable 5G networks. And the idea is also to create uh, an ecosystem of university, academia in general, uh, plus uh, industry for the design of sustainable design of, of ICT. These are the three main big uh, scope uh, goal that uh, the European Union wants uh, from us. So uh, how is our methodology? So how we implement all this project and how we will um, fill with, with this uh, uh, expected impact with the uni uh, um, European Union. We structure the project, divided all the, the, um, the topic in, in 14 individual projects. These projects are your actually PhD, PhD thesis. So you will be the principal investigator of each of these projects. So, which means that you will be the coordinator of the activity related to this project, supervised by your supervisor, by supervisor and working together in, in the theme of the of a supervisor of the consortium. Okay. Again, this this uh, all this project has a, have a um, cross disciplinary research area. So there will be an energy part and ICT uh, part. So all of you should start with the characterization of the harvesting devices in terms of sources, consumption, and all this stuff. And then the project uh, il is devoted to uh, more uh, the uh, devices part plus the network infrastructure part. So there are people that are more related to the definition of the architecture, others that are more related to the uh, definition of the end device communication taking into account both mobile terminals or sensors or other kind of machines. There are people that are working on the radio access network, people that are working more on core networks. So all these projects will be joined together to have a common vision of the sustainable 5G systems. And again, we will have uh, training schools to complement uh, your skill and research activity in general. And you will be enrolled in, in the PhD program of the um, partner university in the consortium. So these are the 14 projects that we have in our, uh, in our network, in our scavenge networks. And to give uh, an overview, I try to make a scheme here of, the, of, our, of our system. So let's try to describe this, this system. Um, first of all, this is the, the access network of, of I, the foreseen 5G uh, access network, radio access network, when we will have uh, a macro base station and a smaller base station. So this macro base station is covering, covering uh, a huge area. Then we will have smaller base station that are covering smaller area, depending on this transmitting power. Then we will have different devices, they could be mobile devices like this, or sensors, or other kind of uh, machine, like again, uh, things that you can have within your houses. Then there will be, normally in, in, the, in the cellular system, uh, a part of the radio access network, there is a, a mobile core that is actually in charge of um, giving some man management functions for uh, uh, handling all the transmission in the, in the radio access part. I'm not entering the detail. We will see the detail during our training schools. And then this mobile core is connected somehow to the backbone, to the internet, where there are, for example, data services, data centers with different kinds of services. And also, I reported here the, the energy grid, because all this network is also uh, supplied by the, the energy grid, the standard energy grid. So there is uh, some uh, energy generation part, which could be, for example, based on fossil fuels. Then there is the distribution part that is going to the uh, 
different elements of the networks, okay? And then I reported here also uh, other mobile systems because uh, this is the 5G, 5G, so the fifth generation, but it's supposed to coexist with the other, um, other system like the 4G, the 3G, the Wi-Fi, and other systems that are not uh, completely standardi standardized with, uh, within the, the framework of uh, 3GPP, which is the standardi standardization organization of, of uh, mobile system in general. So Wi-Fi, for example, is not standardized by this organization, but our system has to uh, coexist with, uh, with these other um, systems. So where to locate uh, you? That is to say, our project that we have in, uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this project. The, the first two, ESR1 and ESR2, will be more or less dedicated to the, uh, let's say, device assisted networking and device to device communication. Uh, then there will be ESR3 that is more on the characterization of network usage in a general terms, so for example, to understand how is the traffic, the traffic uh, uh, um, uh, in the network, how is going the traffic in the network, how um, there is the, if there is the mobility and how uh, the, the user are moving through the network, all this kind of characterization. Then there will be this, these guys here, 4, 8, 11, and 14 that are more related on, uh, let's say, the infrastructure part. So the design and the definition of uh, procedure to optimize the, the network for different uh, network scenario that we can have. So for example, there will be uh, in project number A that is more about cloud run. There are uh, four and 11 that are more on software defined networking in a different flavor. And, and the ESR 14 that is more on end-to-end -end perspective of the project, so including also uh, some scheduling algorithms for mobile terminals. Then there will be ESR 10, that is uh, how to use uh, renewable power base station uh, considering different channel for transmission, so there are not always uh, the, the foreseen channels for uh, um, standardized, but there are also other spectrum that are free for usage. So how we can uh, use this other spectrum for the transmission of 5G system. Then there is this other guy, number 12, that is about the uh, coexistence with the other legacy system. Um, and then there will be these three project here that are more related on how to integrate sensor networks in this, uh, in this 5G system. And finally, there are these two guys here that are more on how we can integrate our energy harvesting system with, uh, with the energy grid, okay? This is more or less a schematic vision of, of your project, just to have uh, an in, but we are at, at the, the beginning, so we have to define a lot of your project. And uh, so, I mean, this is just a preliminary vision of, of your project. Of course, there is much more to do in the, in the future about the training program. So we are here now. So we are doing now the initial training school this, uh, this week. Then there will be other uh, four schools. The, 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 the first one is, each school is about a specific topic. So the, first, the, the school number one will, will, will be about the 5G cellular networks and Internet of Things. And we'll be in, uh, at Imperial College in London is uh, the end of March, the last week of March. Uh, then there is the second school, it's about energy generation and storage, and will be uh, in Paris at SEA, more or less will be around May, probably. And then there will be in school number three, that is about these new scenarios of 5G systems like smart cities, smart grid, and public protection and disaster relief, which is called PVDR. That will be uh, at University of Padua, maybe will be in a, another location which is not Padua, because probably we are trying to have this uh, school jointly with a um, European project in, on, on smart grids, 
So in order to join effort and to have expertise from these other guys working on this project. So maybe it's, uh, it's in another location, maybe in Italy uh, too. Now there will be school number five, which will be at Bristol uh, um, at the Toshiba Laboratories. It is about uh, how to prototype and design a testbed for uh, making, for example, proof of concept of our uh, studies. And then there will be a, uh, a last school, uh, number five, which is more about dissemination activity. So the idea is to have this, uh, this, uh, this school as, a, as an open workshop on sustainable communication. So to give some information to the research community to your uh, achievements during the, the project. It will be more in 2018 probably. So you, you should have some preliminary start probably. And we have uh, the possibility probably to, uh, to have this uh, workshop together with an um, international conference. So we are working to understand how we can uh, merge the effort and to have a session within or a workshop within this, uh, um, this international conference. Then another important part of our project is about uh, disseminations. So we have to, first of all, to publish in international conference and journals. So this is more scientific. So we have to uh, make some uh, scientific work, research work in different uh, flavors. I mean, there are so many uh, conference and organization that are providing us the, uh, the means to, to publish. And then another important part is uh, public engagement. So it's more divulgative part on what we are doing. So we already released uh, a video, for example, describing what we are doing in the, in the, in the network, in the project. But um, you will also uh, uh, make some videos for providing more general information about your study and your research in the framework of the project. So for example, during this school, uh, there will be two guys coming, two video operators that are trying to uh, make a video of our activity here. So you are requested to have an interview with them. Uh, these two guys will arrive um, today probably. So they will contact you to make some, some interviews along I mean, the duration of the school and to describe a bit who we are and, and all the things that I sent to you in the email. So what, I, what I'm transmitting here to you is just that we have also this part because European Union is pressing a lot to, to have this, uh, let's say, divulgative part of, of, our, um, of our project and they push a lot to use video as a mean to, to make this, uh, this divulgative part. We also are requested to make some talks of our achievements at the university. This should be more uh, scientific part because you should have more uh, you can make some scientific presentation, for example, to master's students or less uh, scientific part when you are uh, more related to uh, secondary school, for example. So again, it's a more divulgative part. And we are also requested to make some uh, action through municipalities in general. And we are trying to have a participation on Mobile World Congress, which is um, uh, an event that we now have here in Barcelona, normally in February, about mobile uh, industry in general. And we would like to have uh, a booth there. Uh, normally we have the possibility uh, through CTDC to have this booth there. So the idea is to try to understand how we can uh, participate at this event with some uh, activity or demo if we have uh, any. So we have, again, all, all to be discussed. And another thing that we are requested to do is uh, make some publicity material in magazines. So you will be also uh, contacted by your supervisor to provide some general information about your, uh, your thesis. And then there will be this other part that we call scavenge contest. Uh, at, mm, more or less in 2018, there will be this, uh, the, the idea to have this contest at university in which you provide some issues, some challenges to 
uh, master students and they provide to you some solution and you judge different solution and to give the, I mean, to decide who uh, are the winners of, of this current contest for specific topic that you selected in your specific area of, uh, of study, okay? We will define everything better. These are just hints for, uh, for giving an, an overview of the project. And then another thing that we have to do is to participate in uh, the European Research Nights. From, uh, from time to time there is the, this night, these events, uh, in which you have to disseminate your, uh, your, um, your knowledge and your uh, achievements in, in the project. So we are requested to participate to this kind of night. So again, it's, uh, it's not so technical, but again, we have to do this for the, for the European Union. Okay. So I'm speaking a lot and I think we are running out of time. So again, okay. um, I try to give an overview. So you, if you have question later or I mean the weeks later, I mean just uh, contact your supervisor on me for more explanation on this. Um, this is, uh, these are the, the work packages of, of our projects, okay? Uh, actually, you, you are more uh, involved in this one, so from two to seven, actually. Uh, the, the from number two to number six are research work packages in which your projects are, um, are related to, and then there will be the, the training part, and some, some of your time will be also devoted in the communication and dissemination activity, as, as I said before. So these are mainly uh, the allocation of your project in, in the work packages. Uh, but this doesn't mean that you will not participate at all in other work packages, because there are some uh, relation between different work packages. So this is the, your main activity will be within the work packages that are listed here, but for sure you will be involved in other work packages. And of course, you will be involved in these work packages, number two, energy model, because we have here to characterize the sources, the energy consumption, and to make some modeling of uh, our harvesting uh, uh, energy. So this is the Gantt chart. I tried to put here the, the Gantt chart of the project with the main uh, things that we have to, to do. In as you may know, the project started uh, month number one was uh, February this year, and we'll uh, end on January 2020. <coughs> but your contract are for three years. So these are you, actually. So the, the idea is to have, uh, I mean, it's 36 months, and the S indicates the, your secondment to the different companies or institutes of the, of the network. And these two uh, lighter uh, project here are the guys that are still not uh, in the network. They are expected to join us between December and, and, uh, and January next year. Uh, so we have already here the pleasure to have uh, Marco even though he's not contracted by Toshiba, he will be the ESR by Toshiba. And the other guy is having problems with the visa, so he's joining uh, Huawei, probably, and we don't know how will be solved all the issue with, with the visa, but uh, will join uh, Huawei at most uh, between uh, December and January. And, and these are all the um, the activity that we have regarding the training, and these are about our meetings. I will explain now all these all these things. First of all, let me spend some words about the supervision, which is something that is very important for you and related to your work. So the idea of the network is to supervise your work in different ways. So first of all, uh, different level, let's say. So first of all, we will have um, uh, the, the supervision of your supervisor at uh, your uh, institution uh, and the supervision of the supervisor when you are going to some internship in some uh, institution of the, of the consortium. Then at level two, uh, 
you will be supervised somehow by the work package leader. So there will be a guy or a girl that will lead the activities within a work package where your work will be. So also this person will be in charge of reviewing your activities and to understand if it is aligned with the general uh, concept of the project of e and to uh, report to the supervisory board. Then there will be another level which is uh, about the, the working groups. So we, are, we want to establish some uh, teams, little teams that are working on similar topics and can provide uh, contribution to these uh, uh, similar topics that are studying. So the idea is that every uh, working group have a kind of leader or coordinator that can somehow coordinate the, the activity, the joint activity of this specific area. We have to, the, to define this, this activity in the framework of your project. This is the reason why it's important for you to present today and every meeting to present what you are doing in order to find some other person that is working on similar topics, join effort, and also have joint um, achievement and result. And then at the top, there, there will be the supervisory board, uh, which is actually an assembly of all the supervisors of the scavenge project that is actually uh, looking at your uh, achievements and your progress during, during the project. So this is the reason why it's important for you to have with your supervisor uh, establish and define what is called the personal development career plan. I hope you already seen uh, when you establish at your company, when you define more or less uh, your, uh, your career plan during the framework of, uh, of the project. And this helps the supervisory board to understand the progress during the duration of the project. It's important also that this part, I mean, you will have to elect one representative of you that will be attending the meeting of the uh, supervisory board in order to represent you and then uh, so it, the next uh, supervisory, supervisory board meeting is expected to, um, to have in, uh, in March when we have the school in, uh, in, um, in London so by that date you have to agree which will be your representative not only for that meeting but the, the duration is for one year so this guy or girl will be elected for representing you in the sub supervisory board meeting you across the 2017. Okay, and then every year you have to renew this guy or girl to be uh, in, in, uh, in our uh, supervisory board. Okay, these are again these um, the reservoir packages and I pass directly to this. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make kind of election to have one representative for 40, for the 14 students. So each of each of you has to decide who will be uh, the representative for all the group. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, so according to the research part, I try to make here some uh, scheme uh, reporting the uh, relation between the different work packages. And uh, I report here the fact that work package two about energy modeling and work package three about sustainable networking, which is more uh, related to the definition and the design of the architecture of sustainable 5G system, are kind of basis of what we are doing across <coughs> along the duration of the project. So this, in this work package, in somehow you will be involved, more or less, depending on the topic of your project, but you will be involved in this, in the definition of uh, the, the energy sources and the energy consumption of your part uh, under study and the definition of the architecture on the, on the part of the network or the system that correspond to your project. And then there are these parallel, let's say, work packages that are more or uh, resource optimization 
energy device communication and integration with the smart grid that are related to each other, of course, but uh, they are more parallel in the sense that uh, they are uh, quite uh, um, a grade of independency between, between among each other. So now there is a, a long, uh, well, long note, but uh, there is a description of each work package. So again, more information are in the grant agreement. So if you have some <coughs> doubt, read uh, the grant agreement. What I'm trying to, to explain here is some hints. I give some overview. So uh, the work package two is about uh, the definition and the creation of a common energy framework that should be used by all the 14 projects within the network. And this is about the characterization of our vested and storage system, plus the characterization of the energy consumption sources of our system. And will be led by, by SEA, so Mirel will be uh, the, the work package leader. She will come on Thursday, so you can meet her. And she will be in charge of uh, handling and managing all the activities within this project, in this work package. There are two tasks about the, the definition of our vested and storage systems and the consumption model. This is led by uh, SEA again, and this is by University of Strathclyde. So it, when, when I say this, it means that Mirel would be the, the leader as a supervisor. But it's expected that the students from this uh, entity will be actually the real leader. So uh, the, she will supervise the activities led by, by these students here. And this is a gun chart of the things that we have to deliver. This is valid for uh, all the work package. I mean, all work packages, every work package has milestones plus deliverable, which means that milestones actually are internal reports. So by that date, we should have uh, prepared an internal report about a uh, given topic. And then the deliverable is the report, the document that we will deliver to the European Commission for the review process. Okay. So in this case, we have three milestones. These are the month in which we have to, the, to be prepared this, this, uh, this internal document. And this is uh, the two deliverable that we have to deliver to the European Commission for the review. Uh, again, these are the, the milestone titles and uh, the responsible for each uh, internal report. And these are the two deliverables. So as you may notice, uh, uh, normally the deliverables are uh, at the end of the second year and at the end of the project to report the activity in, in this uh, period of, uh, of time. Work package three is about the design of the architecture. Will be uh, lead, led by Huawei. So Cari will be the leader here. And he's not attending the school, but I'm sure that you will be uh, in contact with him during this month. And uh, uh, he will be for sure at um, the school in London. And this uh, work package is divided in three tasks. Again, led by uh, Huawei, Atonet, the task number two, and CDDC, the task number three, is about radio access. This is more about core network. It is about the uh, network usage, so traffic and, and user mobility. Again, we have one milestone here and two deliverable. Uh, the milestone is about the state of the art of 5G network proposal. And these are the two uh, deliverable, again, intermediate report and the final report. OK, the structure is always the same. And then number four is about the optimization of network infrastructure. We be led by CDDC. And uh, there are two tasks here. It's about radio resource management and heterogeneous radio access, uh, led by Imperial and, and Toshiba. And these are the reports that we have to do in the framework of this uh, uh, work package. One internal and two external. Again, this is about the internal is about the optimization taking to be used for optimized 5G systems. And again, intermediate plus final report. Number five is about the 
optimization of communication uh, among mobile devices and IoT objects will be led by Imperial. And there are two tasks, the first led by SEA and the second by University of Padua. The first is more related to uh, device assistant networking and machine type communication. We have uh, two milestones and two deliverables. And these the milestones and these the deliverables. Number six is about the uh, integration between our communication system and the smart electricity grid. Will be led by University of Padua. And we have one milestones and two deliverables here. This is the milestone about, and these are the two deliverables. So wh when we wrote the, 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 um, uh, the proposal, we, we uh, define actually only three working groups. So there will be for sure one working group of all of you working on energy modeling. And then we design, we uh, establish two working groups about 5G network and network management and another about 5G network scenario. But now we believe that is too big to have this, these two groups. So the idea is for you to find synergy among each other to a smaller group uh, in order to make some joint work and then probably uh, to establish connection among you. So this, this is the general idea that you will find in, uh, in the grant agreement, but I think that is better to redefine this in a more effective way for the future. Okay, and we will uh, see how to, to make this uh, according to the presentation of your project and the achievement that you are, um, you are uh, achieved during, during your, 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 your thesis. So um, almost all the information is in our website, is uh, scavenge.eu. So you will find here on the information that describes the project and you will be in the future a page for uh, presenting your project, who you are and your achievement. We are working on this. And uh, another important fact is that the intranet of the project will be uh, using this, uh, this tool. It's called OnCloud. We established this. You should have already um, an account on this to, to share documents. And I think that is uh, an official intranet for sharing documents and files. Uh, among us, among in a, a network-wide uh, uh, approach, let's say. But of course, if you want to use any other tool for your uh, personal um, sharing of resources with your supervisor, you can use. The, the important thing is that when you have a final report or some papers, that should be in this in the uh, relevant folder in this uh, in this own cloud, so that. All the, the management team of the of the of the network knows when to uh, have uh, to to search for the, the the final file. Okay. So some contents. As I said, I'm the project coordinator, so you will f you will see me in every everywhere. But there are other important persons. Let's say that are the the project management um, responsible who is uh, uh, Marian Ramirez here yeah, at CTTC. Uh, the, the training responsible is uh, Professor Dennis Gundus at Imperial College. And for all the dissemination part is, is uh, Professor Rossi at the University of Padua. And also these are the, the contacts for the work package leaders. So Mirel for work package two, Cari work package three, Marco here for work package four, Again, Dennis for World Package 5 and Michele for World Package 6. Okay? That's it. Any question? Oh, I explained so well. <laughs> okay, guys, so um, let's we have a break now. We have some coffee and some sweeties and salad stuff uh, outside. And then we, uh, in half of uh, an hour, we will uh, continue with uh, the presentation by Leonardo. Okay, thank you.